Does the lamb taste better? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't eat dogs. I'm not green. Hey. Uh, <laughs> I was born in China in the 90s. There's a one-child policy, aka penis only. So when I was born, my father discovered that my penis was missing. He took me to the dumpster, but thank God he was drunk, so he dropped me on the ground. My mother heard me screaming. She said, she's ugly, but she is a fighter. <laughs> I'm kidding her. Meanwhile, all the other baby girls, they end up in the dumpster. They were taken by coyotes, hyenas, and Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> I went to Kentucky for college. People always ask me, Kentucky, really? Yes, really. Nobody lies about going to Kentucky. <laughs> um, my friend in Kentucky, Bobby Bob, he's a... Uh, he does not respect my boundaries. He's like a, a Zhao Ying. Uh, what does, uh, I respect him for calling me Zhao Ying. What does dog meat taste like? I'm like, uh, Bobby, let's respect each other because I never ask you what does your cousin's pussy taste like. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby also wants to convert me. He's like, do you believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Savior? Actually, I think Jesus is pretty hot. You know, he has long, heavy hair, and he's always topless, throwing off his body. But I already believe in Buddha, so I said, Bobby, I'm sorry, but I already believe in Buddha. Bobby was angry. He's like, why would you believe in that bad Bobby? <laughs> you know you are going to hell, right? I was very confused, so I was like, Bobby, first of all, you are fatter than Buddha. You have ankle fat. <laughs> Secondly, uh, it is summertime. We are in Kentucky. We are already in hell. <laughs> and the first time I heard the song Asian Hate, I was like, hell yeah, it is about time. My mom hates everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is uh, my time. I would love to show our amazing guest uh, about our TPC, our second studio, Miss Jen. She is the lady behind this beautiful face. All things nice is because of Jen and Mike. All things that's weird and stupid is because I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Woo! The Def Leppard shirt. Yeah, great music. Yeah, great music. Yes, yes. Yeah. Did you pick the Tom Petty music? Is it you? Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. We. Your third divorce, right? Second. Second. Okay. husband and wife. So I'm like, I want to be like my ex-husband. He's like, you should be my ex-wife. I'm like, let's go back. But my ex-husband like, but fuck you, bitch. You broke my heart, bitch. Go. <laughs> don't go near me. Don't, don't, don't near me. Are you going to be one of those couples that gets divorced and then gets reunited? Uh, no. I, I'm going to make sure of that. that uh, so, <laughs> Jen does not approve. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> behind her, this horse does not eat any, any grass behind her. You just move forward. She moves forward and she goes even the better, the better, better grass, right? Yeah. Greener pastures. Greener, greener grass, Kentucky blue grass. I love it. You're so Kentucky. I'm going to Kentucky the 25th. Uh, For what? Oh, that's awesome. So see that location. Um, my movie, my oh, wait. Oh. Uh, the oh. middle top uh, hall is like uh, 170 acre land. It's a 45 rooms mansion. Horror movie. I play the ghost. My husband said, You look too bad for the ghost. I'm like, Honey, fat, you bad too. Visual representation. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so, how often do you have shows here, Zhao Ying? Jen? Oh, oh, okay, yeah. So, we have shows on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, but we have open mics seven days a week. We have nice. us, uh, from 2 to 10 p.m. And from 2 to 4 p.m., we have 15 minute mics. It's a, a lot of people don't offer. And Mike is usually here for the uh, two to four mics. Yeah, those are, those are great. You get, some, you get some really talented people that come in here. A lot of them are uh, actually gearing up for shows to be headliners. 
You know, okay. so this is a great place for headliners to come in. And uh, a neat little thing that most people don't know is, is that even though during the two to four time period we, we offer those 15 minute mics, there's also a slot for five minute mics. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what I like to offer them is, is that you can combine your 15 with your five and do 20. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So you can do that. <laughs> and so I just, I just asked them, I said, do you want to do a separate five and then a separate 15 or do you want to put it together? Because either way, it's going to be a lot 20 minutes yeah. anyway. So that really, that, you know, that really attracts people to come here to, to figure out their material before they do it. Got it. So what we saw today was uh, something typical at typ uh, 5 p.m. that you guys do open mics or? Yeah. Yes, it is. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It is typical, yes. Wonderful. Yeah, absolutely it is. And then uh, like all the shows that Jim was talking about, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, um, we actually have a lot of our open, open micers are okay. actually put in on the shows, which is great. So it's an opportunity for them to- Yeah, I noticed the recording it. there. So you guys put that up on YouTube and- uh, Well, what I do is I bring that in for the people who are doing their open mics, because it's really important. The reason why they come here is not only to figure out their material, but they also need to see themselves on stage. Yes. And so they can go ahead and study that when they, when they get home. So okay, is, is that your process too, where you're going yeah. to look back on your routine and... So like, there are, uh, there are all the times I'm yelling in on, on the club, like, whether it be the Hollywood comedy or here. I, I like frequenting it, because like it's a nice space to work, 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 work material. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have fun, and then it's cool, because you, you get to see the people that you do mics with, you, you get to be on shows with them, if, uh, if they're funny or not. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. But, no, uh, but what, I think one of the most important things about open mics is, is what I like to add to it, is that it's not just about uh, coming here and doing your material, but it's about networking. Interesting. Which is which, which is something that I always put in place. So everything that I learned during the week, which is, you know, I just basically just scrolling through Instagram, mm -hmm. and pass it on to, to them, because then that kind of starts a conversation, and then mm -hmm. they tell me, oh, okay, this is what I've learned. Yeah, so, so it's really almost like a guild. Yeah. Of sorts. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's an inclusive environment where we want mm -hmm. everyone to feel comfortable, but it's something that's it, it's, it's a positive environment so that people are not only learning, but they're networking and they're mm -hmm. able to go and do other things as well and then bring that back here. And you guys come regularly, obviously, right? Yeah. Because you want to keep working on your craft. So how often are you here, uh, like on average? On average, so like, uh, I usually take like one day a week and then I'll do like three months in a row. So, oh, okay. So, so And it's one of those things where, like, the, the thing that sets apart the um, fascinating comedy and the Hollywood comedy, uh -huh. that's um, apart from the other clubs, is that there's, a, there's definitely a politics that comes with, like, the higher of the clubs. It's like, um, what, like, they, they like, they like putting labels, like, um, what is it, uh, headliner, feature act, opener? Yes. And open mics are down here. Whereas here, it's like, if you have jokes, we'll put you on. That's know? great. It's a, like, it's, it's, a, it's a meritocracy than the um, that's why, that's why I enjoy about the process. Uh, explain that uh, when you say meritocracy. How is it merit? That meaning, uh, that, meaning that if you have jokes and be like your personality, we'll put you, they'll put you on the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, that's how that. So, Zhao Ying and Jen, you guys make that decision on your shows? Yeah, so the way that we do it here is we have a group of hosts. So, Mike came into a day where we had like interviews and we brought in a bunch of hosts so we could create a really diverse group, a really inclusive group of hosts that could nurture comics here. Um, and then the comics actually send me names of people that they like at their open mics. So if I'm at an open mic and I see someone that's great, I'm booking them for the weekend shows. Um, Mike sends me names, everyone sends names. This way we're getting like a wide variety of people that like have different styles, uh, different tastes, um, and it creates like a pretty, uh, pretty well-rounded show for the weekends as well. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Great, great. And yeah. so are there, do you guys do themes or is it? Typically, just kind of a mishmash of well, different comedians. So, um, I had a show on 10 to on um, my, my job before I did this, I was the director of customer experience, and COVID kind of broke me. Um, but we are doing a show on uh, 10 to which is called If I Could Give the Zero Stars, I Would. 
Oh, I love that place. He's coming and he's creating like a whole customer centric Mm. magic like set at the end of it. So that's like kind of like a more uh, like thematic one. But we have uh, one of our hosts that uh, that came in through the auditions, Danny Dunn, he produced his own show and that's going on tomorrow night. And so he picked out and curated his own group of people. Mike's doing that later this month. Um, So we're really like trying to prop up our hosts. We want to create this environment where it's like, if you're a comic here, you can become a host here, and then you can become mm. a producer here, and it's like, you can just really grow your career here. Yeah, we also would be working, Jen and I were working on our monthly um, showcase, uh, mm-hmm. industry showcase. Yeah. I had my manager, producer, but also press, people, amazing people like you, um, who wants to find uh, diversity and wants to help uh, diversify actors and comedians, mm-hmm. therefore uh, I think uh, the priority would be our hosts because they devote their heart and soul in this place. Mike is our super guardian angel, he always <laughs> there. Uh, uh, if I could just give him a pitch, I need this inventory sheet and I swear Mike's the only one that fills it out. Yeah. So. <laughs> Good for you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. and uh, her connections and uh, uh, the people who is gonna give uh, them an opportunity not like uh, sending uh, like a 1,000 actors in your resume uh, email no they can't hear they see you and you are not begging anybody you just get on stage and own the stage and be you and that's the best chance to showcase your talent in front of people mm-hmm. and I want uh, our host they make this place happen also our host can uh, and Jen and I will decide uh, which open micer should be there so how many hosts do you guys have? Because Mike's uh, obviously the most active, but do you guys have other hosts? Yeah, I mean, Christian H. Clark is coming in in a minute. He's going to be doing the rest of the shift, but I think we have about uh, 15 hosts. Oh, wow. And in five more um, for the coming month. So I would say we have a couple of regulars, like Christian does every Wednesdays at this coming time. Uh, we have... Allie Forrest, who does every Fridays um, from 5 to 8. So we have these regulars that are trying to create like environment. an environment where they have like a network of, uh, of micers that come and, you know, work out their material. So Christian's done a really good job of like getting She's a group. Okay. Very hard on promoting. Yeah. Me and her. We love each other, but also we are two completely different person. I feel like we're dressed that way. Yeah, we're also dead. Dead. I'm the devil and she's the an angel. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, she she loves people. She wants to give them everything. She believes in people. She trusts them. And I'm like, let's pay rent! <laughs> 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 like, but I want this, this, and for them, this. I'm like, yeah, but when we work together, it's perfect. I make sure that uh, we pay rent, and she makes sure that uh, our club is a community. Like what Mike said, like, it's, it's a community. Uh, like uh, everybody feel like home, and they are protected. And if somebody's being Nonsense, he will be the guy to take care of everything. Oh, so he's security he's, too. He's very. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Okay. Sweet, but, uh, my Got it. Ex-minister yeah. He's like, uh, no bullshit. I respect him, respect me, but if you're not uh, respecting yeah. other people, he will remove you. We are going to have a talk. And, uh, <laughs> Look at that. And, uh, yeah. What else, Jim, right? So basically, it's just that she's uh, working very hard to build the community. And that's what I want. She wants yeah. to have the vision. It's a summer's comedy. We have a lot of the. Uh, Clubs opening in different part of the town, different part of America, and then we have uh, this the culture is that uh, um, people. I feel like sometimes for people who are not comedians, like sometimes they work in uh, customer service, they also need to vent out uh, the mm. toxic boss and the toxic coworker shit. I'm <laughs> saying. It's, it's, it's not a big therapy ever. So yeah, this is a therapy office too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the is therapy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes uh, Jen would, and I would see somebody never done comedy, they want to try it, we just be like, do it. Yeah. 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 yeah, do it. We don't judge you, and then, like, uh, I feel like that's yeah. helpful, and uh, we want to open more environment yeah. will be for people to feel relaxed. How many comedians do you guys have? You have 15 hosts or so, but how many comedians? Well, I mean, you oh. know, this is my also, he's also my photographer. He's an amazing photographer, a uh, comedian. Oh. 
The rate is great. There's, there's literally thousands of comedians in LA. Thousands, okay. Thousands, tens of thousands, of like that. And they come through here? Yeah. Okay. They, come, they, um, they, they come through the, um, the, different, the different clubs that have that sprout up in LA. Now, the Hollywood comedy and the, and the Mexican comedy, like the, the thing that sets them apart from all that, is that they put the people that show to the mics on stage in the shows. Yeah. And that's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so that's part of the inclusiveness is you're um, able to give the opportunities where other comedy clubs uh, don't. Yeah. Right. Yes. That's great. I want them to, like, there's no bullshit. If you are good, you are, you are trying to get out to mm-hmm. the gym with it. I read, I said something to her, her host said something to her. She will make sure that uh, the, the good comedians who come here, they have priority. Really stop trying to search the name, the hot comedian right now. We don't care about your name. Like, you're looking at true talent. Now, what yeah. if you're bad? I'm sure you get some bad comedians that well, come through here. bad is subjective. Because, like, for instance, uh, you know, I, I, I did have done improv for, like, 15 years. I'm actually kind of newer into stand-up. And I'm realizing that um, something that might be bad to one crowd is actually really funny to another crowd. Mm-hmm. So you really can't, like, say some, paint something is bad. Like, something that I've learned is, like, a lot of my jokes can be a little, like, preachy. And that doesn't go over well with some crowds, and then I'll go and do the same joke somewhere else, and it'll kill. Yeah. So it is really hard. You have to just see someone, like, you know, is the material being worked on? Is it sharp? Is it being, like, you know, mm-hmm. workshopped? And, you know, give them a crowd, and you'll be surprised at things that, like, didn't actually have a mm-hmm. read with an open mic. Actually, it's really big with an audience. So sometimes it. it's taking a chance on people that are just, like, putting in the work. Uh, and there you go. Yeah, she she does Jen's thing. She just the beginning who love people. She's saying nothing to me. I'll be like, a, oh no. I'll be like, oh no. Yeah. Oh, and so I, I want to hear Zhao Ying's yeah, like. Uh, I, I I don't know. I think because uh, I was going to the dumpster and every day my mom tell me you should be the dumpster. You are getting A. If you don't get A, you owe us. You know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's like. Uh, so really mean to myself and when I see some comedians are not uh, taking it seriously is when they yes. get so high and they forget everything they go on high because they don't want to do the work and they say something ah, and then they feel like oh I'm so funny ah, and then they start making fun of people I'll be like uh, uh, this is not good this is not okay, okay. but uh, uh, sometimes they, some people Relax and uh, but for me, because I'm tough on myself, I should ever be like me. Yeah, you're tough I, on I others. I'm not saying mean things, but I just don't want to like, mm-hmm. become like a, It's tough love. It's tough love. I'm me. Like, she's you, just like, no, but you give people chances. Yeah. It's just if they screw you, yeah, uh-huh. then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dra- Dragon Lady comes out, that, right? That's the thing. You'll, you'll believe in people, and like, like, and you give people like hundreds of shots, too. And I, there's been And you built this all up yourself, right? This in the in the Hollywood uh, club. Yes. Uh, from scratch, you decided yes. this was your vision. You wanted to help other comedians, and this is it. This is a, was a planned shop. The Hollywood one was a closing shop. Okay. And uh, it was nothing. We built the stage, everything, oh. everything in one week. Yeah. Uh, I have a uh, communist contractor. Oh. Who has a little dog in the back of his car? He's from Taiwan. He's very nice. He's like, I'm not a communist. 
I'm my own country. I'm like, not really. Like, yeah. oh, You're like, I own you. Yeah, but I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> What kind of dog? A schnauzer. Oh, a that's schnauzer. so cute. Very cute dog. He just stands on the top of the pickup truck and uh, just like looks around and That's barks. so cute. Uh, yeah, we have this really, really wonderful chemistry. She uh, she always wants to hear people. Our neighbor in the back is got really angry when um, we comedians walk out after nine. So Jen went there. She wrote a note and the little candy thing. And the, even her phone number said, you want this trouble, please call me. And he was like, at ease. And I went there to talk to him. And he's like, oh, you're Jen. I said, no, Jen is the blonde girl. I mean, the Chinese lady. But uh, uh, she's the main thing people. I think her spirit, I mean, her very high profile in the corporate world is helping us so much. Mm -hmm. It's comedy. Because uh, it's, it's amazing. You're structuring it. Well, yeah, she does very well. And she has feedback. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, structure typically allows people to flourish, right? Absolutely. Like, you know, you I'm with it, you. Like, you know, give them, give them where to run around, and then, you know, that helps them. So, mm. you know, I, I, you know, make uh, spreadsheets yeah. and, uh, you know, like QR codes. Uh, but, I mean, the, the goal is to hopefully help the hosts be able to do the best that they can. And mm. therefore, like, I think our mentality is like, have happy hosts, have happy comics, have happy audience, and it's just kind of this like circular, um, self-serving machine. So yeah, yeah, I mean that's uh, maybe to a detriment sometimes. I'm a little mm -hmm. too strong. I'm like it's got to be a sheet. It's be better a to sheet. err on the side of that than you know than to be too loosey goosey, right? So yeah, she makes things yeah. easy. Well, and she makes them perform better. I think especially when you created a second theater, that was when it was really necessary. Yeah. Right, like, because when there's one theater, everyone just kind of goes there and is like around. But like, we're all ships passing in the night, basically. So there's got to be a system. Mm -hmm. We have this all. So how exactly has that second theater helped in terms of creating more formality and structure? Well, I think uh, once the second theater got introduced, it was like it was clear the challenges of scaling one theater, and now we have two theaters with two separate like management teams and two separate host groups. And so I think the crafts kind of show like the things that like work with one theater, we start realizing. Yeah, it's a different uh, community. This is a suburban community yeah. here in Pasadena. Hollywood's more yeah. urban. So I think really what it was is uh, I kind of did a pass and just like tightened up a bunch of the processes and structures and that maybe took a month. And I feel like everything works pretty well now. We have kind of two separate host groups. Yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming you two are focused here on the Pasadena, um, or Yao Ying, do you go both, or do you kind of? Uh, I live nearby, I live in the park uh, near the Hollywood location. Uh, mm -hmm. Pasadena, uh, I'm actually from Pasadena, so I'm like, the Hollywood is like the place for shows. Uh, Mike uh, is doing okay, but our shows do better. So we are going to get more like, shows before we leave it like a Thursday, we're going to get shows on Thursday, we get a Sunday show, mm. and a Wednesday show, and we'll do all mic. Uh, uh, mic is uh, doing the mic with the all for like 15 minutes, comedians and uh, headliners. So I'm also going to pay our um, book to show comedians uh, a, a voucher of two mics on the house. They can sign up our mics and do it, so mm. we are rewarded for their head. Okay? Wonderful. So, so as far as the uh, uh, revenue and everything, so the the, the comedians, uh, you guys pay the comedians for you know on the shows. Uh, we don't pay them yet because in Los Angeles it's just extremely difficult to get stage time. Uh, they, uh, so all the it's all free. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they do it for free, but they have drink on the house. Mm -hmm. And we Great. are going to pay them now. Uh, they don't want to know, uh, they don't want to pay them now. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty industry standard that doing uh, 10 minute uh, sets or above sometimes comes with payment. Usually our shows are booked at eight minute sets so we can get more people on stage and give them right. more stage time. So, you know, the, uh, the structure there, you know, for now, right? Like we're always looking to scale and like be, be like more uh, progressive in yes. that sense. But for now better. it's the, the, um, the voucher system to do free open mics, the free drink. Um, and then we it. do pay our hosts um, and we like for every, uh, for every 
show that we put on, we have what's called a sidekick, and that's one of our hosts that like gets all the drinks and helps out and does some stage time. They get paid, the um, open mic hosts get paid for how many people come in. So we're trying to start from there and then continue to build yes, up. All my hosts get paid for the twenty percent of the recognition. Mm -hmm. So they, they get paid for their hard work. Absolutely, that's great. And then uh, obviously, uh, you know, the drinks and the and the food that you guys have here or snacks. Help, help go a long way, right, to supporting like what you guys are doing. Based, uh, snacks, they just get snacks. But uh, my vision is that uh, we're going to get a, a club that's uh, bigger than this one. I'll have the uh, Chinese food. <gasps> my godmother owns the Xi'an restaurant in Beverly Hills. She's going to give me her like, second chef. So he I'm right there. Home. Let me know when. when. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to go. I haven't oh, been there. I said, yeah. I, yeah. yeah that's, uh, Mm -hmm. Over, we, we are gonna move forward with the whole thing. Is Yan food like spicy, like Sichuan, or is it's, it? Uh, it's mild, it's like Beverly Hills, nice. It's okay. For, for white people to, yeah. yeah, eat, to be okay with. <laughs> yeah, okay. Jen's like, I'm, I'm cool with it. Like, yeah. For this white girl. <laughs> I love it. Great, great. So, pretty much this is the room here, huh? It seats about, what, like, uh, 50 people. It's great. We have a podcast room in the back. When we do podcasts, then mm -hmm. I have to do it after the divorce is finalized. So I have more time. And yeah, I am very excited. Also, yeah. yeah. It's, it's awesome because it's like a collective of just all the different hosts and their contributions. Like, you know, these all being prettily like put together. Like one of our hosts, Tate, like just showed up one day and just like made everything look pretty. Uh, Danny is one of our hosts that slightly put that there. And I think hope no one would notice that he put it yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, Danny. Uh, but um, yeah, no, it's uh, like it's great. Like it's it's just coming together. Yeah. But like Dan Danny's also the one that told you about the couches. And, He's like, trying to get out the Yeah. Couches. And he did like a, a long for open micer to uh -huh. move it. He he just gave me a very good way to move it. Yeah. And like, uh, that's my carpet for my last house that I couldn't fit in my, so it's like, you know, it's every piece of this is being contributed by the people that we brought in. That's on. great. And, uh, Hollywood's kind of like that too, the Hollywood. It's smaller and it's busy. It's very busy. And oh, yeah. I'm going to expand it with the, the, the one next door. I want to take it over. Oh, the, so, the like the three things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can uh, renovate it and build in leather couches. And little bar things, and it's twice the size now. There, and then we can apply for a bar license, mm -hmm. and bar, and then a coffee place in the afternoon. Yeah, so we call it coffee and make coffee, espresso. And oh, that's that's my dream. Wonderful. All right. Well, thanks for you know the tour. Uh, do you guys want to? Uh, can we check out the podcast room or? Let's go. I would love to get a little footage of that. Pretty cool, right? I notice how uh, narrow this is. It looks small from the outside, but it goes deep. Yeah. All right, Pasadena the Carmen. Is so well for a oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's our storage room that uh, Jen is in control. Of this oh, okay. She's, and uh, putting all storage like a. There's nothing in there right now. Yes. Okay. Wait, I have to show this because it's so weird. You probably hate it, but we were going to try to decorate these. We found these in the dumpster. And wow. they're just like x-rays. We think yeah. we can make it kind of like... I think this is going to be funny. We can, we can put them up like here so people go to the bathroom, but we can make it like pretty. But again, you know, we're just like a bunch of wacky comedians. Yes. These things are pretty. Yeah. So this is all I like the randomness. Yeah. Yes, we are going to... Oh, okay. This is where the, the so magic yes. happens. I love it. Kind of Joe Rogan mic. Got a green screen here. Green screen for all comedians to do, to do the, um, mm -hmm. the sketch. Because yeah. we have a sketch group, Jen, right? BD Club yes. has a sketch group mm -hmm. that we have uh, around like 20 comedians uh, all uh, work together, write sketches, and film them. And then uh, use for their social media to get uh, traffic for themselves, for their yeah. own career, and help each other. So this green screen they can use, and they, they shoot in the theater and uh, in the back. Mm -hmm. And this couch, Jim found it for me, it's gorgeous. This yeah. yellow pillow is ruining everything. 
<laughs> it's so ugly. <laughs> Oh gosh. Also brought that. That's cute. That's hilarious. That's cute. It looks uh, high. He looks really high. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Jiao Ying doesn't oh, like those cute. comedians that come in well, high. Not funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. You got to get a life size one. Yeah. Doom. <laughs> right. No, Start no, every show with that. <laughs> I love it. And then that's the back door to get to the... Back door. And mm -hmm. see, we, uh, then we got yelled at by our neighbor once. I went and got a whiteboard, and now we uh, make sure everyone knows to be quiet. Yeah, because you got residences. Uh, yeah, yeah. but he's, he's like our best friend now. That's, that's good. He's amazing. That's the best. Yeah, love it. <laughs> and now he was like... When I, we were talking to him, he was just like, I'm going to tell you all the dish on all the other neighbors. Oh, okay. He became your intel. He's <laughs> I love it. Oh, well, wonderful. Thank you for the tour, guys. Yeah. This is the Pasadena Comedy Club, and that's Jen, and that's Zhao Ying, who run this place. So, yeah, because you feel like royalty, right, when you pet him. It's, uh, pugs are Chinese royalty dogs. Very. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's good luck. <laughs> yes. Dogs in the theater, but just let them run around, and they would just take dumps on the stage. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> so it was. So I don't know how lucky that was, but, yeah. uh, but you can consider the dog fertilizing the space, yeah. right? Oh, and shit. that's good luck. Is, you know, they have since sold the theater to a bunch of finance bros, so I don't know how well it went, but, uh, yeah. but they, they did quite well for a while. But I, I'm not gonna need do you have a dog at home, home, Jen? I do. Okay, that's what he's smelling. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, okay, I know that little yeah. <laughs> scan right yeah, there. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Christian, hi. Hello. The press in the house. Yeah, Christian. Yes, Christian, tell us a little bit about, before I shut this off, tell us a little bit about what you do. You're a host, obviously. He has a great mic. I'm the Wednesday night host. Mm -hmm. uh, so every Wednesday, 6 to 10 p.m., I'm here hosting open mic. Uh, what else do you want to know? Uh, awesome, we'll have to check out your shows. Yeah, yeah, it's their shows every uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Some uh, Sundays, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Better than I do, but yeah. And comedians can come and be part of your open mic on uh, yeah, Wednesday. Open mic is open to everybody. Because he works hard and he's sick. Awesome. We're really excited about it. Yeah, it's a supportive mic, so we try to do it. It's a safe place to try to do material. That's what they said. I love it. A very welcoming spot. Yeah. But not here. Yeah. I love it. And that's what uh, comedians need to build their talent. So thank you for doing that. All right. <laughs>